We'll call to order tonight's Committee of the Whole for the Auburn City Council meeting for November the 16th, 2021. The City Council should have the minutes from the Committee of the Whole meeting from November the 2nd, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, is there a move to approve? Move to approve. Second. A motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes carried forth. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Mayor Pro Tem Witten. Yes, sir. We have two vacancy terms begin December 1, 2021 and end November 30, 2025. We have two incumbents, Tammy Hollis and Chris Blackman. Uh, Tammy Hollis did uh, reapply, and I would like to nominate her for a second term. Second. All right. have a motion and a second for Tammy Hollis. Any discussion or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. And the second vacancy... Um, I'd like to nominate A.J. Harris. Second. All right, have a motion and a second for A.J. Harris. Any comments or questions? A.J. would be a great choice. He's done a great job working with our youth in this community for a number of years, and I have a lot of confidence in A.J.'s enthusiasm. He'll do a great job. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries forth. And, Mayor, if I may, I just want to acknowledge we had a lot of applicants um, I know there's a lot of interest in parks and recreation, and I just want to say thank you to those who did fill out the application, and there are lots of opportunities in the future for, for those individuals to potentially serve. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Witten. You're exactly right. I appreciate every one of those people who took time to fill that application out. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Questions on the agenda for the city manager? I know the city manager has some things for us. Yes, we've had a few changes um, from Friday to today, so I'll run through them just real quickly. Item 8A on the consent agenda, which is the council minutes, just listed under 4B, Committee of the Whole, the wrong date. Uh, it should have said September or October 19th uh, minutes instead of September 21st. So you don't need to pull it off of consent that's already been adjusted and you have it before you, but I just wanted to point that out. A couple of other things, item 8D4, which is um, Chevrolet Tahoes for the police department. Um, we appreciate General Motors and all, but they do not have availability for 14 Chevrolet Tahoes at this time. We can only purchase 13. So your agenda item has been updated and is before you on the dais to reflect a lower, lower dollar amount of $441,362 or uh, 441362 in total. And so that's just been modified. And then last, uh, an applicant on October 14th requ requested pre-zoning um, for, for the Keel property. And what that means, uh, that didn't initially reflect on your agenda. They did, in writing, state that they wanted to do that October 14th. They also, staff acknowledged that, and it just didn't, didn't get in your packet. They've also since emailed us as well about it, and I'll explain in a minute. But Item 9B1 will be considered the rezoning for Keel prior to 9A2. Um, and when you request pre-zoning, what that means is Section 1152.85 of the Code of Alabama allows municipalities to pre-zone property that are actively seeking annexation prior to considering the annexation itself. The applicant has requested in writing today, um, depending on your actions on the zoning, they may withdraw their annexation request. And so we'll see where that goes. There'll be a public hearing on that item. So when it comes to that item, I will call it out in the order um, it, for pre-zoning, which will mean um, and a little bit out of order 9A2. I mean, 9B1 will become come before 9A2. Okay. All right. And I'll go back over that at the time. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for the city manager? Okay. Is there a move to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned, and we'll get started with the regular meeting here in just a minute.
Okay, we'll call to order tonight's Auburn City Council meeting for November the 16th, 2021. With the roll call, Lindsay? Dawson? Here. Dixon? <coughs> Griswold? Here. Ovin? Here. Parsons? Here. Smith? Present. Taylor? Here. Witten? Here. Anders? Here. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. During the Committee of the Whole earlier, we have the City Council appointed Tammy Hollis to a second term with the Parks and Rec Board and then appointed A.J. Harris to his first term on the Parks and Rec Board. Under Mayor's announcements tonight, just a couple of things I want to go through. I want to congratulate the Auburn High School girls cross-country team for winning their fifth consecutive state championship recently. So proud of those girls. That is what a great program they've got going at Auburn High. And also this Friday night, the Auburn High School football team will be playing in the state semifinals against the Central Red Devils in Phoenix City, and we wish them the best. I want to thank everybody that uh, in, uh, was a part of the Farm City Breakfast recently that was held in Opelika and thank for the invitation. What a wonder, wonderful breakfast that is with all the things that are brought from farm straight to the table. What a great group of farmers we have here in Lee County and thank them for all their hard work. I want to thank everybody for attending and being a part of Veterans the Veterans Day ceremony last week. Thank you for all the good hard work that took place to make that event happen. Um, it was a great morning and a great opportunity to recognize those who have served us and provide us our freedom. I want to thank uh, uh, the Waltos family for their kind gift to the city of Auburn and our police department. They have uh, provided a new police dog named Ginger after Miss Waltos, and it was uh, given to the city officially uh, before the football game last Saturday. Officer Jason Bryan will be spending his time with Ginger, but we're thankful to the Waltos family for their kind and generous gift. And also we recognized Emily, who will be retiring soon. She is the dog and the partner of Sar uh, Sergeant Bud Neesmith, and thank you, Emily, for your great service. We also recognized Officer Rhett Laportes, who has been a part of the training of the Spirit, of Spirit, the Eagle, who was retired last Saturday as well, and I wasn't aware he was an Eagle trainer, so that's pretty cool to have a police officer to participate in, in that. Um, next week, we'll be entertaining the Iron Bowl for the 16th time in our city's history. It'll be the first time Auburn will have hosted the Iron Bowl since the passing of Coach Pat Dye. Uh, I just want to take time to remember him and thank him for his courage to go seek that game and bring it to Auburn uh, as we see all the fans and alumni come back to the town next week and we see our shops filled and our restaurants filled and our hotels and all of our other lodging filled. It was Coach Dye's courage and initiative along with many others who brought that game and that weekend to our community. And I just want to recognize him for that the first time we'll have that here in Auburn without him. So anyway, um, and then finally, thank you to everybody that worked so hard. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for in our community. I'm thankful for the great employees of the city of Auburn, and I'm thankful for the great citizens that live here in this community. So happy Thanksgiving. Anything from the council? Yes, I have one announcement. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there will be a Thanksgiving dinner for the senior citizens, the disabled, and the homeless uh, th uh, throughout the population of this community. And that event will be held at the Borkin Community Center on Sunday, November the 21st, which is Sunday coming up from 2 to 5 uh, p.m. in the public of senior citizens, disabled, and homeless people are invited. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Connor. Yes, Kelly? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. i got two, uh, two announcements. First off, I'd like to thank City Manager and her staff for supporting the Award 2 meeting last week. It went very well, very informative, and I have gotten uh, lots of positive feedback from that. And secondly, I uh, announced that the cumulative legal expenses for Councilman Dixon versus the City of Auburn et al.'s case, uh, as of 31 October, is now $37,065.31. That's all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other council members with an announcement? Okay. We'll move ahead to Auburn University Communications. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Hope 
y'all are well. Hope y'all had a good weekend despite the game. <coughs> thing about Auburn is that we keep going no matter what. So I'm excited for the next few games to finish off the semester. Um, the biggest thing happening so far on, or in the past few days on campus is face coverings are no longer required in most buildings. Um, it's up to the professor if they want to um, push for masks in class and students can wear them of course if they feel uncomfortable but for me it's the first time I've seen what my professors looked like yesterday and today so that's been really cool and making good progress. Um, last Friday Auburn broke down on its National Panhellenic Legacy Plaza which is some, it's a symbolic and functional place to commemorate black or, or Greek organizations on campus um, so that should be completed in like spring 2022 but that's going to be a really really great facility for students to use. Um, this week we have Better Relations Day, the Thursday the 18th, so UGA and Alabama are coming because um, they don't talk to each other, they just talk to us. So <laughs> we're excited to see them off the football field. My branch, External Affairs, is working on a sportsmanship campaign because we've definitely seen a decline in that across the SEC, so we're going to be talking to them about what we can do to get sportsmanship up across all the SEC. Um, and then the UPC, University Program Council, is having a holiday tree lighting ceremony on November 28th from 4 to 6. That'll be great. Lots of snacks and games and um, the Auburn singers are coming out, choirs, that'll be a great time. And then lastly, Thanksgiving break is next week with the Iron Bowl next weekend. And um, then final exams start December 4th and go for about a week. So students are really excited to finish up the semester and that's all I have. War Eagle. Yep, War Eagle, thank you. And I look forward to being a part of the holiday tree lighting ceremony. Okay, this time is an opportunity for citizens to communicate to the council only on items on tonight's agenda. If you'd like to speak to the city council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes to speak to the council. There are a number of items, in the, particularly at the end of our agenda, that do have public hearings associated with those. I would encourage you to wait until those items are introduced before you would speak to the council. Anyone? Okay, we'll move ahead. City manager's communications. Mayor, under city manager's communications this evening, we have the announcement of one vacancy on the Waterworks Board. The six-year term begins January 2nd, 2022. and ends January 6, 2028. Uh, your original agenda said we would appoint at the December 7th meeting. That is actually December 21st, and we have modified that. So just know that's coming December 21st. A few other minor items. Um, as I mentioned in Committee of the Whole, item 8D4, we had a reduction it's for 13 Chevrolet Tahoes and a lower dollar amount. And then we will be taking, due to a pre-zoning request by the applicant, item 9B1, the Keel rezoning, will come before item 9A2, the Keel annexation and the order on the agenda. And I'll walk you through that when we get there. Are there any questions about those things? All right, moving forward, our first item of business is the consent agenda. Does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda and deal with that item individually? Yes, I'd like to remove item 8B3 and 8B4. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Item 8B3 is a request from Shenhua Auto USA Corp for a tax abatement associated with a building expansion and purchase of new capital equipment with a total investment of $70 million in the creation of 48 jobs. Move for approval. I have a motion and a second. I really wanted to just remove these from the agenda to highlight these. These are two exciting moments that have happened and events that have happened for our community. And um, Ms. Crouch, I didn't know if the Economic Development Director could shed a little more light on both of these. Um, he can take them one at a time if he'd like to. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll go with 8B3 first, the Shenhua announcement, because you would have seen an e-notifier yesterday. But I'd like Mr. Dunlap to speak a little more about the new investment and its importance to the city. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I appreciate the recognition for the, the staff, the Economic Development. Those uh, folks, Art Seatman, Robbie, all the team has worked very hard last few months, particularly with Shenhua. This is a very exciting project. It's been a little under the radar. Uh, uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to see it, we've, uh, our, our friends from Korea hadn't wanted to do an open house yet. And so before we could even have an open house, they, they've announced another big investment. And this is very exciting because they're going to bring in very uh, large high pressure die cast machines. That's what this is. It's a capital equipment expansion within the facility. Uh, these machines give them the capability to do uh, very large uh, parts for Hyundai and Kia. Uh, what's interesting about uh, Shenhua is that there are other things on the horizon and we'll, we expect other things to happen. 
uh, we expect to have an entire complex uh, with this company. It's a very large company and we're working very hard with them to support them as they move forward. So it is a, a $70 million investment, about 48 jobs. It's highly automated. The jobs are going to be well paid because we're working with hot metal, obviously. Uh, so it, it, is a, it is a key piece of uh, industrial um, infrastructure that's necessary in, uh, in the automotive industry, particularly when you're talking about frames and about uh, engine mounts, other kind of things, uh, knuckles, different uh, drive shafts, those kind of things. So it's all part of a network that we've been able to build over the years of high-end quality suppliers from Korea. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. Any other comments or questions from the council? <clears throat> Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item 8B4 is a request from SIO2 Medical Products Incorporated for a tax abatement associated with a building expansion and the purchase of new capital equipment with a total investment of $123,100,000 and the creation of 40 new jobs. Move for approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Once again, I'd just like uh, Ms. Crouch for the Economic Development Director to talk more about this. SIO2 has certainly been... Uh, a primary topic of the City Council here for the last couple of years, and uh, we're certainly excited about their further expansion. Mayor, and I want to add why we did not um, move it from consent. There's several modifications on the agenda um, that will fall later for SIO2, um, and one of the things is one of their investment <coughs> amounts increased from $63.3 million to $200 million. So there's, there's another $137 million in there that, that is in a different agenda item. So I really want to acknowledge you're, you're talking well over, you know, $250 million of additional investment by SIO2. Mr. Dunlap will talk a little bit more about it, but we appreciate Bobby Abrams very much and his continued commitment to this community from, from the early 90s forward. And this is a massive investment and, and very critical to COVID and Moderna vials and other things. Mr. Dunlap. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will, um, <clears throat> once again, uh, this is a very, very exciting project. We've worked on this probably for uh, nine months working uh, very closely with Bobby. We were able to uh, continue to support him. We've got it uh, in a position now where we can move forward. They're going to build uh, an 87,000 square foot expansion on the rear of the 2425. The building I'm talking about is the one where you see GE Aviation uh, off to the left when you attended that groundbreaking. Uh, this building is going to be um, more than doubled in size with a, the lot to the rear. The, what will be in that building is almost over $90 million of coating lines. And so to understand what's happening here, this technology is, uh, I don't like using superlatives generally, and I, I caution my staff against using superlatives, but it is truly a world-class facility in that these vials are plastic and, and they're coated with a thin strip of metal as well as glass, and that's that's why it's silo too. It, it is so uh, that is uh, the, the the chemical name for glass. So what's happening here is is they are exclusive provider to Moderna, and so and and this facility will give them the additional ability to do a new product that will go all over the world. Uh, injectors the prepackaged injector so you simply take it out of a kit and give the shot to an individual so this will is really targeted to uh, uh, third world countries africa other places it's targeted southeast asia india and so um, bobby is doing a lot of exciting things where i'm having lunch tomorrow with a group of uh, swiss that are here uh, that are looking at uh, other opportunities so uh, when you're looking at 123 million investment, Megan is exactly correct. The, real, the true investment of SIO was probably closer to $700 million. Uh, it is a huge win for us, and it is consistently adding jobs. The end game is not in sight, so it, uh, it's an opportunity. We've spawned an entire biotech industry here with Aptar, with Thermo Fisher. And Bobby's had a hand in each of those. You may not realize that, but he was involved in each of those coming to Auburn. Uh, so I'm excited because the big winner here, you know, it's very important for us to understand when we do these kind of projects with these huge capital investments, the big winner is our public school system on ad valorem taxes. 
there will be better than 1.3 million in ad valorem taxes, educational ad valorem taxes generated off just these two investments. Uh, and that is huge. Uh, and that's just the annual. And that now multiply that by 10, that's a huge number. And typically this equipment uh, is very sophisticated, is eight to 10 years in, in life. So it's going to be a solid income stream for our public schools. And we're very fortunate to have this investment. Typically these, this kind of investment would be on the Princeton corridor in the Northeast. So that's where most of the pharma industry is located in the US. This is a great win for Auburn. And um, the universities played a role. All of us have worked very hard to do that. Megan played a major role so over the years. So we've, uh, we're very proud to have this investment in Auburn. Good. Any questions or comments from the council? Congratulations to you and your staff. Thank you to everybody that's made this happen. This is awesome. Okay. All, right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that carries four. Under ordinances this evening, item 9A1 is a request from the Auburn City Board of Education to annex approximately 128.68 acres of property located on the east side of North Donahue Drive at the terminus of Yarbrough Farms Boulevard. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its November 9, 2021 meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary. I introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and seconds. Anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? Okay. Hearing none, is there any discussion? Yeah. Could you uh, walk us through a little bit of uh, their intentions or is that public knowledge? Is at, at the moment, their intentions are they're acquiring school property. You know, for some future use, they have not indicated fully what, what they're going to do with the property at this time. Thank you. And I would say, you know, they have another large site off of Richland Road as well um, that has been much the point of, of discussion, but they have not made a final decision um, in nature as to what they ultimately plan to do with this property or when. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Lindsay with a roll call. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Hovey? Yes, ma'am. Arsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. 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 As previously mentioned, Section 1152.85 of the Code of Alabama allows municipalities to prezone properties that are actively seeking annexation prior to consideration of the annexation itself. Therefore, Item 9B1 needs to be considered before Item 9A2. So 9B1 is a request from Ledge Nettles on behalf of Rayford Kill to prezone approximately 41.66 acres of property located on the east side of Heath Road and north of US Highway 280 in the Water Oak Ridge subdivision. And the rezoning request is from rural to large lot residential district, which equals one acre lots, one acre lot minimums. The Planning Commission recommended approval by a vote of eight to one at its October 14th, 2021 meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. We have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? All right, hearing none, at this time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the city council on this, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ledge Nettles Baseline Surveying, uh, 2004 Yarbrough Drive, Opelika. So the this one... Uh, the previous time that you mentioned it and that you voted on the um, the LLRD, uh, we we missed it. We we got our wires crossed up, miscommunication. We just didn't show up to talk. We wish we could have because I think we could have some good points. So I do want to address you about that now, and uh, let y'all see what you think about the um, what we have to, to where we're coming from here. So uh, Heath Road's an arterial road. And I think one of the, the main votes against it, from what I've read and heard, was that um, there were too many mailboxes. This was going to add to uh, Heath Road in that section. So uh, it's 40 acres, so when you do the road and everything else, you're probably talking about maybe 34 lots. 
and this is the end of his area. He has no more right there. So that's it. Um, we uh, over time we had developed. He had developed this land. I'd helped him since 2000, and you know, breaking up the lots. We saved purposely one spot for a road one day. Uh, the the site distance there. If 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 there's a problem, you know, I want to kind of get it out there. Sight distance shouldn't be a problem because we left 700 feet to the north. Uh, we left 1,400 feet to the south, and that should be well within the guidelines. So, um, I mean, I, I don't think that 34 lots will add a lot of traffic. You know, the, the definition of an arterial is 13,300 um, vehicles per day. So we're adding 34 lots times, you know, two or so for that. So I don't think we're overloading it. So what we're trying to do here is we want to um, try to get you to consider, reconsider uh, this piece of land as part of where it was in, originally. It was originally included in the map, the master plan for this site. And it was taken out. Um, I don't know why. You know, maybe it was a concern for the traffic. I want it. That's why I'm trying to dispel that now. So... Um, you know, a lot of studies were done since January of 2020 uh, on this area. Staff, um, I believe you guys were involved in some of that too. A lot of the, the studies, you know, COVID stopped it, but um, I know everybody had a little input on it, and staff had recommended it. We'd actually met with staff thinking that it was going to go through. We, we had a layout and talked with them. They were good, you know, seemed everything seemed pretty good. So we were a little bit blindsided by the removing it from the agenda th from the uh the llrd so uh really where we're going with that is we want you to think okay for all this work that staff put in that you guys put in all that for somebody to, to come in and say something about it, it's going to add too many mailboxes and say well good point you know and and kind of vote it down just reconsider that a lot of work was put into that thought and you you guys put a lot of work into it and um, just want you to think about it and reconsider. Open your mind for a minute and think about maybe it is. You know, it's not going to be the gateway to opens up everything. So I just, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to come back and answer. If you think of something, I'll come back if you want me to and uh, be glad to try to answer anything. Does the council have any questions for Mr. Nettles now? Okay. Thank you. I'm done. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Who'll be next? Mr. Miller, the timer wasn't working on that one. It wasn't? No public hearing. There, yeah. Is there no timer? No, there's no, no, there's there's no, no timer. public hearing. Yes. Good evening, City Council. My name is Brad Tapley. I live on 4943 Heath Road. Um, pleasure to be here this evening. Um, kind of been following this all along because I was wondering how it was going to affect our property out there. I live a west side, probably 100 yards from where this neighborhood would be developed. Um, and so looking at the 280 focus study and all that, a lot of commercial is being brought to that area. And uh, with our lot being 1.8 acres, you know, it was built in, the, our house was built in 96. So it's been out there a while. But um you know, I think we love that community out there, the the fellowship with our neighbors out there as well. And I think the large lot residential district will be good for that community out there. You know, the I listened to the previous city council meetings and there was things brought up about traffic and mailboxes. And we've resided out there for three years now. We've never had an issue turning into uh, our driveway. We've never had an issue with backlogs getting on the 280. Um, my wife goes and checks the mailbox with the kids every evening and walks across, you know, Highway 147. And she, I mean, we never even had any issues with that. And far as I know, as long as I lived out there, there hadn't been any accidents near our driveway. Um, so I'm in, in support of it going to a large lot resident district. So I was just coming here to voice my support tonight. Okay. So, thank thank you. you. Yes, sir. Who'll be next? Anyone? Hey guys, Shane Davis. I live at 4020 Alabama Highway 147. I spoke at the planning uh, meeting last month and 
you know, my wife and I and my family have been on 147 for 15 years now. We travel. I got a 17-year-old son that travels to and from school with my two daughters every day. And the traffic is, you know, it's never a concern of mine. Like, I never am afraid of my kid taking my daughters to school or coming home. And we're never backed up on 280 like he said. We... Uh, you know, very seldom you might see an accident at the intersection of 147 and 280. I know there's been a lot at the other intersection of 147 or North College and, and 280, but they put a traffic light, and I believe that the state may be considering a traffic light at the north side of 147 and 280. And y'all may know more about that than I do, but that's rumors that I've heard. Uh, so I just, I. I say I support the large acre lot, the LLRD or whatever it's called also, and I think it'd be a great, you know, great spot to do the one acre lots and get away from the real tight subdivisions. Okay. So. Thank you, sir. Who would be next? My name is Georgia Jones, and I live at 5050 Heath Road. Um, so I actually live at the house that um, would be, like, the interest of the neighborhood. Um, I've never really had an issue with traffic, don't have an issue with the site, distance. Um, I would like to say that I, I'm 26, and so I'm currently trying to find a house. And so I've had a really hard time trying to find something between the quarter of an acre lot or three-acre lot. I can't afford three acres. Um, I just can't afford that at my age. Um, and there's a lot of people that are like um, grad students, young couples, um, just married couples, have little children that can't afford three acre lots either. Um, so I think that it would be a great development for the North Auburn area as it's growing substantially. Um, I have a lot of friends and family that live on Donahue and they have more traffic than we do out there. Um, and like I ordered pizza the other night, delivery. So um, I don't really have an issue. Um, traffic, delivery of food, um, mailboxes, trash. So yeah, I think it'll be a great addition to the Auburn area. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Yes, ma'am. My name's Ashley Medeiros. I live at 997 Birdie Lane. So I live off Donahue and wanted to jump up in support of the Keels request for the one acre lots. We, I grew up on the north side of Auburn. I've lived here pretty much my whole life. And now my husband and I with our little boy live off Donahue, like I said. And we are on 0.3 acres and quickly found that that's not what we desire long term. So we've been excited about the idea of one acre lots nearby. We could stay in our area and where we want to be close to town, but still take advantage of those one acre lots. So that was all. Thank you for your time. That was my two cents. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Holly Keel, and I'm Mike Keel's wife. Um, and so our address is 5050 Heath Road. Um, I'll come in at a couple of different stances. Uh, a traffic has never been an issue on uh, Heath Road. It's a very adequate highway. Um, I've been traveling that road since 2012. <laughs> um, not only is the traffic not an issue, but our need, I'm an agent, um, a real estate agent, our need in the city of Auburn, there's so much dense <laughs> developments. We don't have, we've kind of lost that personal touch of a builder that will actually listen to a client and will build a home that is specifically uh, what they would like. And that's Mike Kill's product. He's been building for over 30 years and has a just a, a reputation on his own. So 
I would ask you to, to consider this because not only will it be an asset to our residents here in the town, but um, it will be a quality build and something that will last for an eternity. So um, we have a great community out at Heath Road. Um, everyone knows everyone, and um, we would just like to ask for your support. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, I'm Josh Dunaway. I'd like to, I live on 140 Great Ellis Lane. Just want to reiterate a couple things that they said. We don't have a problem with traffic up and down there. We turn in and out of our driveways and everything just fine. And bringing this to the city, it would be, you know, one acre lots are huge in Auburn, really. I'm in the building process. Everything like that's a plus. I mean, you're not, three acre lots are going to be outrageous for people to afford. They're going to be 200,000 plus. When you get down to one acre lots, you can afford more. You can, you know, they have more luxury stuff they can build with that and not be so refined to half an acre, quarter an acre. Um, also, it would give my kids a way to go into the neighborhood and play and have more people to play with, you know, and stuff like that other than being defined to Plainsman Hills subdivision, one road. And, um, you know, like I said, I go on off 280 all the time. Not a problem. Don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Um, and I believe that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. We'll close the public here. <clears throat> Any questions or discussion from the council? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Sure, go right yeah. ahead. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming up and speaking this evening. Um, I received input today from four people that live out in the Heath Road area. They said they were unable to be here tonight, but asked that I pass along their objections to uh, to this um, this request. And the rationale again was traffic, as y'all have mentioned. Um, I'm happy to hear that y'all don't have problems with traffic, but the uh, the four other people that live out on Heath Road that contacted me uh, cited traffic uh, issues. And the uh, other thing that um, was pretty consistent was the, the lack of a sewer system, sewer supportability in the area, that we're talking about 38 or 40, half, or you said 34 lots or whatever it is, up to 40, that would all be on septic systems. And I have a, a neighborhood in Ward 2 that is was annexed long before I was on the city council, there's 100% on septic systems. And now they're coming back asking for city support and all these kinds of things uh, because the property has turned over over time and they didn't know what they were getting into. But uh, I don't think it's a good idea for us to be uh, annexing and establishing entire subdivisions within the city limits that are solely on septic systems. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Anyone else from the council have a comment or a question? Um, I have a comment and um, maybe a question. The, I guess the, the big issue here is that from a planning perspective, this body, as recent as September of this year, um, visited and, and delved into the 280 focus area study in which we adopted as part of the master plan. And we chose to keep that area as classified as rural. So this would go and direct conflict with what we just as a body agreed to do. Um, I do agree that one acre lots are a category that this community needs more of. Um, however, I don't know that this is the best place for that to happen at this point in time because of the lack of infrastructure that does exist off of Highway 147. Um, and I travel that road too greatly um, on a, a weekly and daily basis. And I have a difference of opinion on traffic. Um, but there's, a, there's speed issues. There's um, coming up to 147, the stacking. But mainly, if I lived in one of the houses that backed up to a development of almost, let's say, 30, I think the idea was 34 lots of septics, and they start failing, I, I would be most upset. Um, that's just one aspect of it. I just don't think that the area is set up 
infra from an infrastructure perspective. We've already had enough um, troubles with trying to get that portion of 147 um, aligned and safely um, developed, and that's taken a very long time to, to happen. So I think this would compound those issues. And I, I recognize that the applicant spoke and stated that it is a arterial road that can handle 13,300 trips. Um, but I think it's greatly under, underestimated how many trips 34, 20, 34 lots would actually have. Um, not to mention, um, right now, our school systems, um, that's 34 additional families coming in. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just, I think, for that area, we also just recently, this body, um, chose to decline an annexation that would have built homes much further up um, north 147 for some of the same exact reasons. So for that perspective, I'm not in favor at this time keeping or going to large lot residential district. Um, I think it should stay r rural in nature because of um, lack of infrastructure at this point in time. Thank you, Beth. Anyone else on the council? Ms. Crouch, can you talk to the to the aspect of a neighborhood being built on septic and what kind of responsibility does that put on the city for its future? I'm going to give you an introduction and then I'm going to have our water resource management director <laughs> speak more to it. Um, at, at the end of the day, um, typically we see lots in Auburn that are three acres and greater on, on septic tanks, but not all the time. The, the health department, which actually regulates septic tanks, we say minor things about them, um, does allow them for one, one acre lots. There is, there is no question about that. And in this case, they don't have publicly available. It's not like they're refusing to tie to public sewer. It is not available on that side of 280. So I'll have Mr. Carson come up and just speak a little bit to it from his perspective and, and how we look at that from a regulatory standpoint. Okay. Thank you, Council. Um, from a regulatory standpoint, there's really um, not a whole lot of uh, authority that the Water Resource Management Division has over it. Um, obviously, a one-acre lot is uh, meets the state, state regulations uh, our biggest concern is if a septic tank fails is there enough room to build another field line um, a one acre lot can present some challenges um, we haven't seen any issues with the larger lots but again uh, we really don't have any authority to prevent them from a uh, city perspective. So. And what Eric's referring to is in our water resource management um, design and construction manual. It's not, it's not prohibited, but it's also because the state law allows it. But he's outlined for you there are challenges associated sometimes upon failure. And Councilperson Griswold is also referring to a subdivision where the same constituents that contact him do contact my office and Mr. Carson's office a good bit, wanting to tie to sewer, and we don't have that ability without the subdivision coming together, they would have to spend a good bit of money together to, to tie in. And so one of our challenges when things like this happen is the expectation of future homeowners after you turn over the house one time will eventually expect the city to do something. Uh, Mr. Carson, we don't have current plans for public sewer to be in that vicinity. No, due to the topography of the region and the distance out there, the only way to get sewer to that area would be a major pump station across 280 with it. Uh, there are no plans right now to, to put future sewer out in that area. And a major pump station would be an allocation from the city or do developers usually participate in those kind of expenses? Typically developers participate in them. Years ago there was a large development proposed up there that was going to require a big pump station and eventually the developer decided it wasn't cost effective and looked elsewhere. So. And, and there, there is a history of some areas, some subdivisions, uh, like Willow Creek and um, uh, let's see, is it Timberwood down by the water plant that were put on septic tanks years ago that have problems. And some of those homeowners uh, are really left with no options and uh, uh, really struggle with repairing those field lines. So, okay, so. What water authority services that area? We do. The Auburn Water Board does. Mm -hmm. Is there any concerns about... Uh, Instead of tanks possibly seeping into the water? No, sir. The ones that are, aren't there some out there on wheels? Oh, into the water table? Uh, not that I'm aware of. It's not, it hasn't been an issue, and if it was, the, the state would have to step in. But 
Uh, the state does have a very minimum requirement for uh, lot sizes, which is uh, a concern to me personally, but I have no data or authority to prevent small lots. That's one issue. Though. The person that contacted me today was had was worried about possibly seeping through some wells. Um, you know, that's always a concern uh, when you get high density on septic tanks if you are in well water. Um, but I have no knowledge of any instances in the, in the city. So, Thank you. I always tell, may I ask a question about water? Um, sure. I know in the past we've had some issues with um, water pressure up in that area. Um, how, how are we um, on that issue right now? For like, I know Plainsman Hills was having some disruption in flow at certain times of the day with water. Well, I think that was intermittent due, due to problems associated with our booster station up there. I think for the most part that's that's been running pretty smooth okay. lately. Um, as more homes develop out there, we could look at the, the possibility of building a water tower in that area to provide more uh, consistent pressure, but there's just not enough demand right now because if you build a water tower, you have a, a large volume of water stored and that creates water quality issues. And there's just not enough homes up there right now to turn over a water tower. Uh, so the booster station is all we can really rely on right now for water quality purposes. So. Any other questions for Mr. Carson? Okay. Which sounds kind of like a chicken and egg situation. You know, we, we can't, if there's a concern with the water tower or needing to add one, we can't do that until there's houses to service, but we're not talking about adding houses to necess necessitate a water tower. So, I mean, we're at, I mean, at the periphery, we're always going to have an issue, you know, with, with service, uh, whether it's water or sewer. Um, I, I think our, our concern, I mean, a legitimate concern on, on, on sewer issues, but you know, there's a lot of speculation here on whether or not, you know, a one acre lot can handle a, a septic tank. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to try to hang my hat on whether or not my, my opinion up here, uh, you know, can dictate a, the, uh, the service of a septic tank on a one acre lot versus a three acre lot. So I, mean, I just think, there's a, you know, I just want to point out there's a lot of, you know, in these in these fingers, in the periphery of our our annexation conversations, we're not going to have answers, and we can't service some of these people until we get houses to necessitate it. Um, you know, and, and as far as the septic tank system goes, on a smaller lot versus a larger lot, you know, we we aren't the expert. Um, we do have the health department to have some sort of regulatory stipulations. We haven't had the option of a one acre lot in the city limits of Auburn until a month ago, so we haven't had to worry about that. We've had the option, just people haven't built them. I mean, it's, you can build a one-acre okay, lot. Okay, good point, good point. That's <laughs> just, I mean. It just hasn't been zoned as, right. a, as an option. A, a one-acre neighborhood, I right. suppose. We're, again, we're talking about density. There right. haven't been any one-acre neighborhoods um, because they've been required to be three acres. I think it's also important to note with water pressure, just Mr. Carson hears much about it citywide. And when we're looking at subdivisions, they have to meet a minimum pressure requirement per laws and regulations, but it doesn't mean it's a pressure that they love to have in their shower or out of their garden hose. Um, that is something when people buy into a subdivision, um, they need to know. And we have different pressures throughout the city. And I can tell you right now, one of the best places to be is near Interstate 85. Um, that's, everybody has pressure reducers in that area. And it's, it's purely an elevation issue and gravity. And that, that causes that. But, um, I think you get much from your constituents about pressure and what we do make sure there's fire flows that are required uh, for subdivisions to meet and minimum flows for domestic water for houses and those are met when they're in the city limits by our criteria. That's right and that's part of the problem with water towers if you you have to have a thousand gallons a minute <coughs> at a minimum residual pressure for fire protection you got to maintain a thousand gallons a minute for two hours and that's what causes the water towers to have to be so big. And that's the reason we can't turn that water over enough with that few homes in that area. But that being said, our booster station, uh, it does provide 40, 50, 60 pounds of pressure in that area, which is, which is good pressure. It's not great pressure, but it's good pressure. Uh, at times we have had electrical problems there with miscellaneous things breaking, which will cause the booster station to go down and pressure to drop to 20 pounds or 30 pounds. Uh, but for the most part, it is pretty reliable. But I, I can understand it being a nuisance when it does go down living out there. It could get old once in a while. But, but I think we're, we're, uh, we've got our handle on it pretty good right now. So. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Thank you, Eric. Okay. Yep, thank you. Any other comments or questions from the council? <clears throat> okay. Ms. Crouch, would you remind the council what we are voting on at this point in time? We're voting on some pre-zoning requests um, prior to prior to annexation. So this would would tell the property owner whether or not they are able to achieve the zoning they requested prior to consideration of annexation, and that would be to rezone 41.66 acres from what would be rural upon an annexation to large lot residential, which is um, one acre minimum lots. Not it's not a maximum; it's a minimum. So. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Everybody ready? Before uh, one more. Before sure. we pulled it off of our 280 corridor study, you know, we, we kind of we we specified this particular spot mm -hmm. to be pulled off of that original. Um, the future land use plan. Yeah, yes, land that's correct. You know, or the, the uh, proposed. Mm -hmm. What um, what was it? But just refresh my memory. What was it before we pulled it off and decided to? So in the recommendation out of the 280 corridor study was limited residential, which is the same. But prior to that, and the planning staff is going to speak to this, it was rural, I believe, because everything is rural until we move it to something else, um, especially on the fringes of the city. So it was rural. It was initially proposed in what you reviewed based on the study to go to limited residential is called in the future land use plan, which is akin to large lot residential, which the developer is asking. And that's what I believe Mr. Nettles was referring to is that the change was in the proposed future land use plan and where the council uh, made that modification upon adoption. I do need to be clear, you are the city's policymaker, so staff makes recommendations, but ultimately this nine member body makes the final decision about our future land use plan. Um, and you made this, a decision that night at that time. If, if there hadn't been any, any rumblings of a, a development out there on this 41 acres, and I'm just, I feel like I'm on, on trial here, you know, it, what, what do we think, would there have been a conversation to pull that off and rezone it if there hadn't been a proposed development on these 41 acres to go from large lot back to rural? I mean, I, I just feel like it was, I wonder if it was pointed out or Well, as an extension past that property, it all remained rural in the proposed plan. So it was almost like that got identified to to become LRD or LLRD um, specifically to support a development versus everything outside of that was rural, remained rural. And LLRD was, is intended as a transition between rural and other developments. Sure. And there's already a, a whole row of, of homes or uh, properties on Heath Road that can serve as that transition already. There, it's already there. There's already a transition. So there is a precedence for that type of transition, you know, on Heath Road right now. So it's not a stretch to continue one acre lots into the further rural outside this 41 acres. Nor is it a stretch to continue rural the other direction. Sure. So the only question I have, just to understand what we actually vote, um, I don't know, you know, what the council is going to vote on this, but just say if it's voted down, then does that kill the annexation? Or, or the applicant has indicated that they would like to withdraw that, but we would confirm that if, if that's the action the council takes, just to be sure. Oh, okay. But they, in an email today, said that that would be their request, but we'll confirm. Um, if that were to happen. And that's not in our purview, but what what would they be allowed to do if they weren't annexed in? And they're in the county, and they can't subdivide smaller than three-acre lots, um, and but they can land use-wise do whichever they choose to do because it's in the county. Uh, the city has subdivision authority in this vicinity, but not zoning authority if it's not in the city limits. So could they do anything besides residential? Yes, they can do any land use unless this falls in the county's um, new zoning area, which I, I believe that's more in the Beulah area and not anywhere near here, then they can choose whatever land use they wish. Uh, the, only, the only authority we have is a subdivision authority. Well, if, if it's denied, they can put anything they want on those 41 acres. 
That's correct. As they've had the ability to do to date. Any other questions? Everybody ready? Any other questions? Okay. Lindsay, the roll call? Griswold? No. Ovi? Yes. Parsons? No. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? No. Witten? No. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. It ties, so it fails. So the rezoning was not approved. Is that correct, Ms. Manley? Yes. It's 4-4. Four, four. Four, four. So therefore, it did not gain a majority in either direction, so it fails. Mr. Nettles, do you want to proceed with the annexation? Okay. Just wanted to confirm before we moved on in the agenda. All right, so just, just if you're tracking, item 9A2, which we previously skipped over, has been withdrawn by the applicant, and that is the Keel annexation. Mayor, I'll proceed in just a minute. Okay. Because we have some folks getting up. All right, item 9B2 is a request from T.J. Johnson on behalf of Joseph Ernest to rezone approximately 19.4 acres of property known as the Bottle Development located at the southwest corner of the intersection of U.S. Highway 280 and North College Street from rural to development district housing. This item was postponed by the City Council at its October 19, 2021 meeting, and therefore this is the second reading of this item. A public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. We have a motion and a second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? All right, hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address city council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any discussion or questions from the council? Okay, Lindsay with a roll call. Ovi? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Witten? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 9B3 is a request from T.J. Johnson on behalf of Joseph Ernest to rezone approximately 44.8 acres of property located or known as the Bottle Development located at the southwest corner of the intersection of U.S. Highway 280 and North College Street from rural to comprehensive development district. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its September 9th, 2021 meeting. This item was postponed by the Council at its October 19th meeting, and therefore this is the second reading of this item. A public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and a second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? All right. Hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the city council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions from the council? Comments? I have, I have a question. It says the recommendation is recommended approval with staff comp conditions so if we were to pass this this evening would that automatically <clears throat> include the staff conditions that includes everything that the planning commission had added and a lot of that came the developer worked handily with the staff about some can some things that they agreed to as part of the plan development district overlay steve is there okay, so the conditional use has several conditions that were recommended by the planning commission my recollection was that this is just the straight rezoning on the 45 acres, 44 acres, isn't that right? So I don't believe there were any conditions on this one. Um, I'm looking at the recommendation says with staff conditions. Um, I was looking for the resolution. That, that might not be. Is that this B4? is the agenda item summary and for 9B3? It probably just carried over from the PDD portion. Um, so. I'm maybe ahead of, but it, I'm just going off what's in front of me. Okay. We're on 9B2. 9B3. 9B3. Right. 9B3. It says recommendation forward to the city council with a recommendation of approval with staff conditions. Okay. I don't believe there were conditions. So the conditions are with the PDD. 
There are conditions, and that's that's just a normal thing that is said with planning commission items. If you look at the the resolution that's in your packet that comes from the planning commission, um, you know, there's an ordinance, and actually, the resolution doesn't say that there were any conditions per Mr. Foot. So that was just picked up in the agenda item summary. But there are some things, as as I had previously indicated, that the developer was very amenable to working with the city on, and 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 they volunteer voluntarily did did some things at staff's request um, to make what we felt was a better project and I'm deeply appreciative of their willingness to do that there are a few things that were not going to be easy for them to do and they were not able to proceed with that but they very much indulged not only our request for a PDD overlay but some additional things such as some sidewalks on both sides of the roads and things things like that and I sincerely appreciate their partnership with the city and willingness to do that um, we don't always see that and they were willing to work with us and, so and it did, it did create some some delays also in timing coming to you because of that so we're, we're appreciative any other questions okay Lindsay Parsons yes Smith. yes ma'am Taylor yes Bitten. yes Dawson yes ma'am Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 9B4 is a request from T.J. Johnson on behalf of Joseph Ernest to place the plan development district designation on approximately 64.04 acres of property known as the bottle development located at the intersection of 280 and North College Street with current base zones of development district housing and comprehensive development district. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its October 14, 2021 meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and a second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions or comments from the council? I, I do want to acknowledge this looks like a nice, clean <coughs> um, development as far as the way it's laid out and <coughs> clear and how the commercial nodes are to the um, street side and that it I did acknowledge or did notice that there's additional buffers that were added on certain pieces as one of the I guess conditions that's what so I get again my question is if we approve this it's with the um, staff comments that's correct okay. and you'll see in the in the Planning Commission resolution those items okay Thank you. And that was part of the reason there was a, d a slight delay um, and why this didn't track with the two rezonings is Planning Commission um, delayed due to a few of these things. And again, the developer worked work with staff on that and those things have been resolved. And what's in this, this memo and it attached in, in the Planning Commission resolution is accurate. Do we anticipate the, um, the proposed realignment off of 280 to happen any point in time soon. The proposed realignment through Auburn University property, you're referring to Alabama 147 somehow realigning to make a full intersection on the north and south sides of the road. Uh, City Engineer Frazier, I don't believe that we have any update on that, that that's happening anytime soon. And I would say, you know, one of the challenges is why Auburn University is a great partner that is research property for them and they, they tend to to not um, usually part with it, but never say never. And it's shown on here because it's part of a master street plan and the developer showed it at, at our request, but that's just letting you know that someday, hopefully, <laughs> we can make that connection. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the council? Okay, Lindsay? Smith. Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Witten. Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hovey? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Anders? Yes. We'll have one more item for the bottle, but that's under resolution. So moving forward, item 9C is a request from the City of Auburn Planning Department to make various zoning ordinance text amendments to correct references to zoning ordinance sections and city departments, as well as to relocate certain regulations to more logical sections. In other words, this isn't any major regulatory change, but it's a cleanup of the zoning ordinance. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. second. I have a motion. Second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? I deny unanimous consent. All right. 
We have one more ordinance to consider, and it is item 9D, authorizes a commercial development agreement between the City of Auburn and Cleveland Northside LLC to rebate certain sales and use taxes of up to $25,000 per year for seven years, not to exceed a total of $175,000 for new shop space located at 1850 Shug Jordan Parkway. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion to second. See, while the council have a problem moving forward with voting on this this evening. <clears throat> Seeing or hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? I've heard a lot of excitement question. about something new coming in on that side of town, you know, as far as a, uh, some options to to eat and dining options on the north side. So I'm, I'm glad to see something going on up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. excited as well. Is this going to be a, a, an additional Amsterdam's location or? Yes, um, it is. And, and I want to clarify, and I appreciate you asking. This will be their second location. The location at the, the park, at the research park, is no longer a location. So you have, um, you'll have, and I think it's interesting, uh, it's uh, the north side, north side crossing versus south side where the current development is. We sincerely appreciate the Cleveland's investment in this area. This shop space will be bricked. Um, they have a very strong reputation for the retail space and residential homes that they've done in terms of the quality of design and architecture. The Commercial Development Authority was deeply appreciative of the design and Kevin Howard, our commercial development director, worked with them. Um, we're also very excited to offer more sit-down dining options in this area of town. This is our highest gr highest growth area and there are very <coughs> limited um, sit-down options for people there. The AU Club does offer some of that, but not everybody has access. And this, this will be a very good location for this. Um, and again, why is adjacent to the Walmart neighborhood market wholly owned by Northside Crossing LLC and not, not related to that development other than it's located here. And this abatement or this um, agreement for the um, tax portion, that stays with the um, property owner and not with the individual businesses? That's correct. So if tenants change, um, stays with them. We do have a cannibalization clause and some other things, and I'm just glad Mr. Griswold brought, brought that up, is you have to retain it. it, it by granting an incentive, we have some provisions that keep you from um, poaching tenants from other people's shopping centers and then us providing an incentive. Um, you know, they're investing much money here and our rebate is small, but what our goal was was to rebate them for their enhanced architecture, which they did very well. We're typically seeing um, <coughs> EFIS or stucco looking shop space and to, to get something brick and nice architecture on it, you'll have a restaurant on both ends, outdoor dining. I know it's hard to have atmosphere um, in the vicinity of Shug Jordan Parkway, but uh, the Clevelands are masters at creating that, and, and I know that they'll do a great job with it. And I'm excited to have something where people don't have to get too far from their neighborhoods um, anymore to have some sit-down dining. I expect that the other parcel may be more of a fast casual or, or fast food style situation. It could have a drive-through. Um, one's been approved in that location, but again, it'll offer options for everybody in that vicinity. Megan, thank you for you and your staff for the hard work on this. And certainly we're grateful for the Clevelands for investing in this part of Auburn. Thank you. Now, let me just ask a question. So this is going to be on the uh, other side of the neighborhood Walmart? It's in the same piece of property. Um, and that's there's a, a map in your pocket or in your packet that has an aerial photo um, that shows it's kind of adjacent to the gas station. I'll have no additional curb cuts on Shug Jordan Parkway, but it's adjacent to the curb cut on Shug Jordan Parkway that's already there. Okay. It's a currently undeveloped area, and it sits between there and Owens Road, basically. So would it be a, like a, uh, I guess, cut through from Walmart to this? Yeah, that's connected, and we require um, cross access through our developments, and and that is what's meant by that requirement is so you can actually turn off a Donahue if you didn't want to get out on the Sugar Jordan Parkway, go around Walmart and, and get through to this. In the same, we have a nice sidewalk um, on Donahue that connects people. So people that live in that um, portion of Auburn are able to walk through neighborhoods and up Donahue and, and get there should they want to walk there. This uh, mentions that if Amsterdam happens to fail, they have to replace it with something with a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Not 
uh, another not a fast food place, but That's a real correct. restaurant. That's correct. You read the events of default, and those that is where the meat of the yeah. agreement usually is, and those get modified project by project depending on the parameters, and that's something um, Kevin Howard had recommended that we do. He had a, a talk with Billy Cleveland. They were very amenable to it, um, and it, it's just saying we want another restaurant to come back there if you want the rebate to continue instead of um, a nail salon, which I appreciate all investment in Auburn, but we're looking for something that turns over sales tax dollars. And so um, those are jobs and other taxes, but yeah, we'd like to see another restaurant go back. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Lindsay? Witten? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ovi? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Anders? Yes. All right, we're moving to resolutions. Under resolutions this evening, we have a request item 10A from TJ Johnson on behalf of Joseph Ernest for conditional use approval of outdoor recreational uses, institutional uses, special residential uses, office use, and road service uses for property known as the bottle located at southwest corner of Highway 280 and North College Street. Properties currently zone comprehensive development district and development district housing with an overlay of planned development district. The planning commission unanimously recommended approval at its October 14th, 2021 meeting. A public hearing is required. Move, Move for approval. approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A2 is a request from David Slocum on behalf of Embrace United Methodist Church Incorporated for conditional use approval of an institutional use a church for property located at 2142 North College Street in the development district housing zone with a planned development district overlay. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval as, at its November 9th, 2021 meeting. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. <clears throat> now, close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? This is just an extension. It's already been approved for this use. It has. A, you also um, considered something similar for the Auburn Community Church. Uh, COVID delayed a lot of people's projects, and yes, they had previously received approval. Do we have a timeline? Um, is this extended another 18 months? This is a fresh approval, so therefore they have a full 18 months. Did they indicate when they might start moving dirt? Mr. Foote, Ms. Robinson. No. I, I don't know anything about the start date. I just know they have events on a regular basis on the property, so I'm just curious as to what they're long-range plans maybe I I will double check that you don't have development review team plans submitted or do you so usually once civil plans get submitted and mr. horror a building plans been submitted no but they're moving through the process usually civil plans are the first thing we see and then building plans follow but they'll have another 18 months um, to start moving dirt on the property or move more dirt than they previously may have done um, I will um, just acknowledge the First time this came up, I voted no because I still don't think it's the best place for this use on that road. But since they've already been approved, I will be voting in favor of this time for the extension. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A3 is a request from Brett Basquin on behalf of NP Alabama Investments <coughs> LLC for conditional use approval for a road service use parking lot for Sons Ford located at 114 East Veterans Boulevard in the Comprehensive Development District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its November 9th, 2021 meeting. A public hearing is required. Move for approval with the removal of planning condition number three. Second. I have a motion and a second. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. See no one. We'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions? Can we? Um, Let's find it. Uh, yep. Number three. Yep. On number three in your agenda item summary, the the planning director indicated um, that staff was recommending removal of that additional 
information came available between Planning Commission and City Council, and that, that is no longer a needed comment okay. per staff recommendation. Mr. Basquin had resolved any concerns with that item. Could you clarify which one you're talking about? You're talking about so, the island? So um, item number three, I, th I believe it is the island. Yep. Island. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> they've done some work in there already. It's very nice what they've done in the perimeter. Yeah, and also the, the same with this one. This had also been previously approved and same, it, it expired. Um, again, COVID delayed much. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, item 10A4 is a request from Ledge Nettles on behalf of the third generation Auburn LLC for conditional use <clears throat> approval of the expansion of an existing industrial use for Nashville Wire located at 1955 McMillan Street in the Industrial Zoning District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its November 9th, 2021 meeting and a public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the City Council, please give us your name and address for the record. We'll close the public here. Any comments or questions from the council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, those are all the items of business we have for you this evening. Okay. At this time, we'll open the Citizens Open Forum. If you'd like to address the City Council about anything on your mind, please come forward and give us your name and address. And remember, you have three minutes to speak to the council. Remember, your comments are directed towards the council. Okay. Not seeing anyone before we adjourn. I certainly want to once again wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Do I have a move to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned.